author's note of cupid's cyclopedia this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by david wales cupid's cyclopedia by oliver herford and john cecil clay author's note it has long been the belief of the authors that love-making should be included in the regular curriculum of our schools it seems to us the most important branch of co-education how few of us know how to make love properly and how very few after making it know how to keep it so much depends upon the kind of love which is made there are no artificial methods of preserving love but the best kind will keep forever few beginners know how to make the lasting kind and many even of those with vast experience are still quite clumsy the only way is to keep at it we hope that this book will fill a long-felt want surely of all long-felt wants the want of love seems longest it is for the earnest student of true love that we have compiled this cyclopedia o hereford john cecil clay end of author's note part one of cupid's cyclopedia by oliver herford and john cecil clay this librivox recording is in the public domain part one letters a through z a the first letter placed by cupid at the head of his alphabet because it stands for amour ardour art affinity affection adoration affability angel etc also a is the easiest word to spell with the exception of i the origin of the form of our capital letter a is supposed to have been an egyptian symbol see illustration representing two people engaged in the ancient pastime called kissin which survives even at the present day a by many supposed to be the oldest of the alphabet and constituting as it does the initial of adam's name was doubtless the only letter in existence at the time adam learned to write the words ark antediluvian ancestry archaeology and antiquity all support the above theory girls like adelaide agatha agnes alice althea amanda amy angelina and arabella whose initials fall in this letter will be attractive amiable artless and in the opposite sex most attracted by those of ardent ambitious and affable disposition absence the sixth sense arrived at by the exclusion of the other five a powerful stimulant to love see longing when combined with distance lends enchantment to the other five senses adamant masculine a very hard word see father admiration from admi the persian word meaning love and ration food love food or food of love affinity feminine ad at finis boundary at the boundary the one one meets around the corner alimony the fine for speeding in the joy-ride of matrimony altar the forge where hearts are fused from the word halter to hitch amount a foreign measure of love anchor the symbol of hope see english word hanker to long for angel see her appendix see last page arm the arm is a muscular string connecting the hand with the shoulder a man can give his arm without giving his hand coat of arms cupid's heart-shaped shield gules pierced by an arrow argent crest on an olive branch a dove a proper ringed door flappant ashes fashionable lenten headdress especially effective when combined with sackcloth a vowel a showdown in the game of love b b is supposed to take its shape from the popular and industrious insect known as the bee see illustration others claim that its form is copied from the curves of cupid's bow 
in either case its chief characteristic is busyness b is a letter beloved of all bashful bouncing beautiful and bonny all of which pleasing attributes are the natural inheritance of the girls to whose lot the initial b shall fall see betty bella bertha bridget and belinda the most congenial qualities of the opposite sex will be bravery brawn briskness and brains baby a small thing somewhat resembling a cupid without wings bachelor neuter an immune balcony cupid's fire escape beauty neuter an affection of the skin taking but not contagious most popular american export best best girl see her bill see coo bird see hat blush a weakness of youth and an accomplishment of experience the pink of impropriety bond there are two kinds the united states bonds and cupid's bonds of the united states bravery a quality looked for in man found in woman the personal adornment of a woman and the mental adornment of a man breach breach of promise suit a suit made to fit the devil but sometimes worn by cupid break to break hearts popular pastime of the american girl brute neuter a husband c c is the curliest of all the letters it takes its shape from the first golden curl given as a love token by cupid to psyche when he found her again after their first quarrel thus originating the society of psychical research and the engagement ring c being the initial of cupid has many of his charming graces being careless coquettish capricious clandestine clinging and curious these charms will also be found in the maids who follow the curly initial c among the c girls are the following chloe clorinda clarice clara clementine catherine constance cynthia and carol the attractive qualities of their affinities are candor coolness cynicism cleverness and cash cake wedding cake a saccharine monument to the memory of love care the mother of thrift and the child of extravagance if you do not take it before marriage it will overtake you after caress a sort of dope very enjoyable cash a sort of window fastener to keep love from flying out cad masculine the other man cat feminine the other woman chair a small ingeniously constructed seat for two people called after cheops the inventor the first chair was presented to cassiopeia and now appears in the constellation of that name cheese part of cupid's menu bread and cheese and kisses clock a paradoxical chaperone who is least in the way when it doesn't go company two consent see papa coo see bill courtship a picturesque gateway to a commonplace estate crowd three cure of love marriage curiosity the taper which lights the flame of love curl feminine a man trap verb to curl the dog curls up to sleep the cat curls up to sleep even my lady curls up to sleep cynic one who has been stung d the letter d dates from about nine sixty seven b c hippopotamia one of solomon's many wives having been blessed with no children had a little pet animal presumably much like the modern lapdog of which she was very fond and was forever exclaiming of it isn't it dear or isn't it darling solomon would invariably reply no doggone it and sometimes even no damn it then hippopotamia would smile disclosing two very lovely dimples realizing the usefulness of such words solomon created the letter d in order to be able to spell them in the hieroglyphics of the times it was written as this fragment will show 
the form being taken from hippopotamia's little pet dog hydrophobia d has turned out to be one of the most useful letters in cupid's alphabet beginning as it does deary ducky dreams delight determination and desire but it has an unhappy side in don't disappointment and despair the girls under these letters are all darlings see any one of them darling from dearling a little dear sometimes excessively dear dear beloved also expensive dawn a term for early morning used by people who don't have to get up defects what a woman loves a man for delusion hopes dressmaker desire loves partner dimple feminine a pitfall in a garden of blush roses doggerel rhyme without reason generally written by puppies do that which is needed a slang word for money dove a tender fowl popular both in poetry and cookery books when too old to roast or broil may be served up in verse as the emblem of conjugal love dream feminine term used by a woman describing a hat mass term describing the woman used by the man who is destined to buy the hat duel the highest compliment two men can pay one woman duty a millstone sometimes mistaken by cupid for a heart what we expect in others e the letter e takes its shape from the elephant in whose symbolical anatomy it plays the most important part it is the belief of scientists that no animal has been responsible for more exclamations expressive of amazement than the elephant the presence of e in ejaculation extraordinary egad enormous is directly traceable to the close relation of the letter to that popular pachyderm the girls under e for instance edith eleanor elizabeth elsie emily emma esther eunice evangeline and evelina are distinguished for ease elegance excitability and economy and will be most attracted to the opposite sex by extravagance eccentricity and early rising escape divorce eternity oh i'll be down in a minute evil a while of the devil ever and forever the devil of a while excuse self-accusation experience an expensive tutor eyebrow a moustache worn over the eye an incentive to sonnets f the form of the letter f was first discovered on an ancient fragment of pottery by a german archaeologist in the shape of a sandal on what is supposed to be the foot of achilles as will be seen in the accompanying cut the heel of the sandal and the part covering what is known as the tendon of achilles is peculiarly designed for the protection of that part of the foot which was the only vulnerable spot in achilles foot this can at best be accepted only as an ingenious conjecture f girls will be frank fragile and fastidious and those named fanny felicia flora fidelia florence francis or flo will find their affinities in those of the opposite sex who are fearless fickle and fantastic fainting obsolete a feminine maneuver fashion feminine the sum of all the virtues fig fig leaf a fall fashion of a false modiste see figure one first first love an appetizer first kiss much has been written about the exquisite joy of this still it is unsatisfying hence the second the third etc ad lib flirtation a way for two people who are not married to each other to pass the time as a matter of fact a flirtation isn't anything it's a thing to do and is really easier to do than to describe there are many sorts of flirtation the everyday or sidewalk flirtation is the commonest kind other very popular forms are the eye the eyebrow the fan the glove the handkerchief and the foot flirtation a natural attribute to woman but an easily acquired accomplishment in man forever 
love's promissory note subject to discount g the present form of the letter g is derived from the ancient babylonian symbol for g the letter in its present shape is composed of only half of the babylonian symbol which is properly written g g or g g c cut when we consider that without this letter there could be no girls in the world we should be thankful for g in fact we are in favor of its being made the national thanksgiving letter gertrude georgiana grace and all the girls of this letter will be glorious with their generosity gentleness grace and gaiety and cannot be won by gold or gems he who would win one of these must be guileless and go ahead garter see knee a species of serpent gas gaslight a light often too weak for one and generally too strong for two the fainter the gas the braver the bow shakespeare girl the beginning of trouble an apple blossom in the garden of love gooseberry an unbidden fruit gossip nothing to speak of grass widow a grass widow is a widow which makes hay h the eighth letter of cupid's alphabet takes its form from the hittite symbol meaning an heir has been born to his house the symbol as shown in the cut represents two hittite gentlemen shaking hands the gladder looking one is the proud father and is being congratulated upon the birth of his first son girls did not count for so much then as now in later symbolic writing this symbol came to stand for a pleasant or good-natured greeting as shown in such words as howdy hittite how north american indian howdy do new england hello telephonic and hail it would be hard to reckon the immense amount of good this letter has done for without hell and headache how many of us would be good and oh the joys of life for without h where would happiness and the honeymoon be and where heart hope health and harmony girls under this sign will be handsome honest and home-loving but those named helen harriet henrietta and hannah seem to be easily hypnotized by hollow hypocritical humbugs of the opposite sex hooray happiness the mainspring of the good time peace heaven all in her eye heart the ticker in the bourse of love horticulture see cupid's almanac hell an expression of petulance hesitation the thief of good times honesty a bunker in the game of love honeymoon the sugar on the bread of matrimony hope the child of care and pretty sister of despair i the letter i spells by itself the most popular word in our language though under cupid's spell the word you is more thought of you and i being often the most happy of cupid's combination i is the most attenuated letter of the alphabet by some the letter i is supposed to have possessed originally a well-rounded and ornate figure having been worn to its present thread-like shape by constant use in speech and writing when not acting in its popular capacity of first-person pronoun i is anything but popular as a letter standing as it does for indifference irksomeness insignificance industry and other uncongenial things i has a leaning to the cold and classic in its choice of females some of its favorites being iphigenia irene imogen ivias and iolante to these ladies the most appealing masculine qualities will be irony idleness independence and impecuniosity i the most popular letter in the alphabet if the drawbridge to the castle of hope illusion love's tailor and art's servant ink the stuff that bills books and billy do are made of innocence a moral vacuum j j we are confident takes the shape from one of venus's doves we don't know which one but we think it is the dove of peace or possibly the turtle dove 
we are quite sure it is not from the ring dove to strengthen our theory we present herewith a cut of a fragment of a loving cup presented to cupid at a dinner given in his honour by the ancient and honourable society of psychic research just when we cannot tell for unfortunately the date is only left in part but it must have been long long ago when love was very young there has been much controversy over this fragment some claiming it to represent a jay-bird and others a duck some an owl because of the moon in its eye but we are sure it's a love of a dove why because a jay-bird is blue a duck has webbed feet and an owl a hooked bill it is a jolly letter and has been the beginning of much joy and foolish jealousy the worst thing it ever did was when it started the word jilt the men most attractive to such jolly girls as jane julia josephine jemima juliet and juliana are those of just but jovial disposition jealousy cupid's shadow jest see life life is a jest and all things show it i thought so once but now i know it gay's epigraph jilt an angel unawares originally jolt i e a jolt on the path of true love which never runs smooth schopenhauer in his great work on dutch treats spells it chit and gives it as an obsolete past tense of the verb to chill joy the libretto of laughter june the time to make hay k the form of the letter k we trace to the assyrian cherubus figure of karudbi the mighty who stood at the gateway of earthly happiness and guarded the pathway of true love it is strange that these composite boy-bird figures were also known as shedai the nearest word we have to which is the hebrew shedim devils unquestionably it is from the word karubi that we get our word cubid or cupid the girls under this sign are usually called catherine meaning pure or one of its diminutives kitty or kate they are always kind and extremely kissable while the men are apt to be keen knowledge seeker and knightly kef pronounced kef arabic slang to loaf happily to invite one's soul the action of doing nothing kindness the larger half of the other boy's apple king the card that takes the queen kismet a young lady one is on kissing terms with kismet originally kismet meaning good luck kiss a course of procedure cunningly designed for the mutual stoppage of speech at a moment when words are superfluous kissing see under moustache a pastime of the unmarried knee an adjustable animated settee designed for the use of ladies knowledge dame nature's lover not an entanglement l long long ago the god of love was supposed to dwell in the moon and was called lamech the moon god from the sometimes startling effect moonlight had upon the sentimental it was believed that the moonbeams were the arrows of the god of love cupid's arrows hence this symbol c cut came to mean affection and from it came the letter l ranking very high in cupid's alphabet beginning as it does the most important word in the history of the world love the symbol was usually found as in cupid's alphabet following the symbol of cubid and meaning that love follows in the path of cupid the neo-babylonian characters are the most sentimental ever known as they are made up almost entirely of arrangements of this symbol slightly conventionalized lois laura leonora lucy lydia lucretia louise and lucinda the women under this sign are languid luscious lackadaisical and loving while the men are usually named lionel and are light-hearted and lazy note it is interesting to note the chinese use of the same symbol surrounded by tears pronounced sim meaning heart lap a pillow c gray 
here rests his head upon the lap of earth lips the two edges or borders of the mouth the two fleshy or muscular parts composing the opening of the mouth generally used for kissing cussing and conversation loneliness an instigation the married man's meat the single man's poison lottery from lot state awry askew a cynical definition of marriage love a transitory derangement of all the five senses the chemistry of attraction lure cupid's signposts not always safe to follow they may be found in many and fantastic shapes such as a bow of ribbon a stray ringlet a sidelong glance a sigh or a breath of heliotrope m m is so ancient that no one really knows where it came from however because of the fragment of the jar shown here c cut found just outside the garden of eden and representing two outsiders bargaining the origin of this letter has been credited to the hebrews and is interesting in showing the politeness of these early people money moses and mercantile all strengthen this theory girls of this letter will be modest and will have merry and magnetic dispositions and will be most happy when married to masterful manly men of means the one thing to mar this letter is its connection with the word mitten marriage the conventional ending of a love affair a lonesome state memory a thing to forget with mirror her mirror cupid's cook-stove misery lover of company modesty conscious purity mole the exception that proves the rule money see uncle monogamy sometimes spelled monotony moon a planetary old maid who busies herself about other people's love affairs and the recipient of love confidences mrs the okay of respectability moustache as kipling says kissing a man without a moustache is like eating an egg without salt the question was recently put before the ten million subscribers of the perfect ladies home journal every one of whom without a single exception replied that she did not know never having eaten an egg without salt a masculine note if she is an m girl you will be lucky if her name is melinda or miriam or mabel or miranda or millicent or maud or mehitabel or magdalen or maria or minerva or marion or minna or margaret or matilda or marcia or marianne or melissa or martha or mary n is the sign of the negative and is found in the form of an eel on an ancient egyptian tablet from a lady refusing her hand in marriage and slipping out of it in a nice and graceful manner evidently the symbol of polite refusal n girls like nora and nancy and nell will be nice and naive and sometimes naughty it is not a popular letter with men because of its association with nervous no never and numb nature a dame nature the mistress of the house of life in which love is ever the favored guest neglect a breakfast food of love never a feminine sign of yielding no feminine for yes nothing the boundaries of the universe and of love number cupid's lucky number two o o has its origin in the wedding ring and is the symbol of eternity it seems to have been used by all the people of the earth as we find in the babylonian archaic old aramean cypriot and practically in all writings of all times from its very shape it means happiness and content o girls will be orderly and in olden times were fond of osculation the men are often odd ostentatious and overbearing oceans a minute measure of love oh an exclamation meaning this is so sudden onions should never be eaten alone opportunity an invitation of fate 
osculation a game of chance own to possess from onus a burden p p in its primitive form was the symbol of pairing being as the cut shows a combination of you and i the sort of thing a bashful lover would carve on a tree or stone or scratch in the sand when taking a walk with his adored one it seems natural that it should stand for perfume poetry pastime pleasure passion panacea paradise and peace in cupid's alphabet to prevent the slightest breath of scandal it is always placed after the symbol of the wedding ring the girls who come within the pale of this letter see phyllis prudence pearl penelope pauline philippa phoebe or priscilla will be petite and pretty and will have perfect poise while the men will be polite and polished great posers and poker players but pliable in the hands of woman passion the father of tenderness purity the mother of tenderness unconscious modesty see modesty past something to be forgotten patience the tip time gives to the waiter pity love's half-brother pleasure true love's shadow prudence said love how strange we never met before but now we've met i hope we'll meet no more q q as shown by this ancient bit of sculpture in its original hieroglyphic form represented a lover's quarrel and from the cast of features presumably an amorite this proves it of very ancient origin as in the early times the amorites were the dominant race of syria and canaan which are named on the oldest babylonian monuments the land of the amorites see map of amuria there are plenty of amorites in the world to-day but they show not the slightest desire to congregate but quite to the contrary can be found wandering off in pairs at the slightest pretext such words as quibble quirk quiz quip and querulous seem to strengthen the unpleasant features of this letter fortunately there are no q girls they would be very queer if there were question woman r this form we find first used as the symbol of the seal of rabsarius chief of the eunuchs in the reign of sennacherib king of assyria the symbol evidently represents rapsaris at his daily task of watching the ladies of the royal harem to see that they did not indulge too freely in sweetmeats some wit of the day twisted rapsaris into rabari in assyrian to stretch to rubber and so a new symbol in the writing of the times was born and we have the letter r not the most cheerful letter in cupid's alphabet bringing with it as it does refusal regret remorse revenge please remit and that great hindrance to lovers reason girls under this sign combine the sweetness of the rose with the fire and depth of the ruby and will be most attracted to those in the opposite sex of reckless and roving disposition religion in the religion of love the courtesan is a heretic but the nun is an atheist richard garnet ribbon a rope in disguise rice the confetti of matrimony ring symbol of slavery romance once upon a time seldom twice rose the hardest working flower in love's garden ruffle a frill on the outskirts of good form rule golden rule do unto others etc canonical extenuation of osculation s the story of s is sadness monday in the garden and a lovely day just enough air is stirring to rustle the leaves soothingly tuesday another such day wednesday if anything better thursday a wonderful day languorous with the perfume of flowers the birds never sang so sweetly the butterflies never seemed so brilliant the little silver brook fell into the lake with so soothing a sound and the drowsy hum of the bee was like a lullaby 
such a dreamy contentment seemed to pervade the whole garden like the breath of a rose a caressing zephyr sighed overhead and creaked ever so little the old signboard nestled among the leaves the old signboard with this inscription in quaint characters correndu se bene gesserit adam looked up from where he lolled in the soft grass and smiled as at an old friend he stretched and drew a deep breath of content the day seemed the most wonderful he had known friday black friday they called it afterward broke clear and bright but on the horizon great piles of black cloud and far off the ominous muttering of thunder all nature seemed nervous and a-tremble the breeze was fitful and petulant and the hush of some impending evil hung over the garden the old signboard creaked sharply poor adam poor us there confronting him was this word in fresh bright paint skidoo see note that night it rained oh how it rained because this symbol c cut pronounced s like the hiss of a serpent can be traced back to the day the adams moved and which stood for sin scandal shame sorrow scorn satire suspicion scowl and selfishness people have been willing to accept adam's story and the poor old serpent has been made the scapegoat in the whole affair we have gone very carefully into this matter and we find that adam was a lazy poet and dreamer and was put out of eden for not paying his rent the girls under s will be stylish sentimental sincere and simple in their tastes while the men will be silver-tongued and smooth Note this quaint form of dispossessed notice we find used all through the stone and iron ages secret a feminine invention for the rapid dissemination of news sense the safest fuel for the flame of love's altar sensitiveness a symptom sentiment bedecker to the land of love tells you what to admire sigh the rustle of a caged cupid's wings silence if silence gives consent how is it women marry sin a matter of opinion what other people do and we talk about sofa a receptacle for spoons spoon an arrangement for supplying nourishment to the lovesick suspicion a hair of the wrong color sympathy love's sister t t in adam's autobiography we find toward the end of the sojourn in the garden this symbol see cut on this page often used and always in this sense and being an hungered we went to the tea and ate poetic translators of these lines have been pleased to call this symbol the tree of life and weave a pretty story around it which fits in with adam's falderall about the snake we find however much used in the phoenician hieroglyphs the most ancient of all languages this symbol the sign of the usurer or pawn-shop this unquestionably establishes our version of this garden story c s the variation in adam's way of writing the symbol is due either to that extreme sense of delicacy which would naturally make him wish to disguise the unpleasant or to sheer laziness he was such a poet girls fortunate enough to come under this letter will be tender and true and will be most attracted to tall talented temperate men telephone love's telephone number two one o oh heaven temptation woman anything forbidden a challenge an invitation to don't tenderness moonlight three a crowd loves unlucky number time woman's worst enemy a cure-all true love an old-fashioned sentiment trust a love preserver on the ship of joy truth a very painful irritant two company you the old assyrians needing men for their many wars did not believe in race suicide the law therefore was that all men arriving at the age of twenty-three and not married must wear a yoke of wood about the neck until such time as they should wed 
old bachelors were rare in assyria it is natural then that the yoke should have become a symbol of bachelorhood the cut herewith shows this symbol from a tablet from the epic of nimrod u takes its form from the yoke and its sound from the assyrian mm, implying negation as shown in such words as unit until unsafe unacceptable unamiable unblemished unbroken uncalled undutiful unburied unfashionable unfeeling unfruitful unpoetic unmarried and unwise you girls are usually unsophisticated and unaffected and the men for them to marry should be useful upright and urbane un a cantankerous prefix which contradicts every adjective it meets union a combination of at least two unmarried states us the plural of you v v originated from an early representation of venus rising from the sea this symbol was used upon the lady's entrance to all the public baths of the ancients in cupid's alphabet in honor of his mother this symbol was the last and stood for veneration and virtue but as customs changed it became necessary to add the wedding symbol from the fact that venus had five sweethearts came the use of the symbol to denote five valeria victoria virginia vivian vera and violet the lucky girls under this sign will be as sweet as the verbena and versed in every art to make the male heart vibrate violently the men will be vigorous but visionary and inclined to be fond of the vine vanity everything variety is the spice of love victim bridegroom w w comes from the very sacred and beautiful symbol of wedlock one cannot realize unless quite familiar with these ancient peoples with what reverence they held this symbol what poetry and romance surged through the mind of him who gazed upon it what fluttering of heart what dizziness yes the ancients loved marriage they adored it some of them were so devoted to it that they did it over and over again solomon for instance at times the rush was so great that the clerks in the office of record would get behind in their work and in their haste would neglect to make the hole in the wedding ring showing the bridegroom's hand so in the symbol and giving the opportunity for some one to advance the theory that this symbol did not mean marriage but represented the doctor offering a pill to his patient meaning sickness this is absurd w girls will be wholesome winning and wise and will be most happy when wedded to men of wealth waste the equator of heaven web a net an entanglement doubtless from the german weib woman wedding a necessary formality before securing a divorce widow the most dangerous variety of unmarried female wife a darning attachment for the domestic machine woman the last but not the least of all created things an afterthought x x comes from cupid's own mark used by him in the day before writing was invented and everybody had his own or her own peculiar mark to sign checks i o u s and love letters we are indebted to the british museum for allowing us access to their treasure chambers there we find this mark on many dainty billadoux left upon psyche's dressing-table by cupid the symbol for many centuries of true love and many variations of it were used such as i am overjoyed i have the blues fly with me meet me meet me by moonlight let us be married i love you not do you think you can support a wife i will come to-night i leave town to-morrow come back i love you x girls are usually thought of with great tenderness by a man but they are sometimes a considerable annoyance as for example xanthope why a derivative of wise 
we show here the central figure from a decoration over the entrance to the temple of cupid and naturally supposed to represent the high priest pronouncing the wedding blessing with this before us it is easy to understand why why is the parent of such words as yearn yea yielding yes and yoking another poetic-minded archaeologist has tried to persuade us to his theory that the romantic ancients who were forever giving human form to things symbolized in this figure the waterfall his theory is without foundation why girls will be ever youthful and are rare as yttrium they should be much sought after by you men yes cupid's password yesterday regret you whoever you are youth the time we wasted cupid's holiday season z the symbol shown here from an ancient roller seal dating back to the earliest days of the turkish race shows its owner worshipping at the shrine of cupid hence the word zealot the arrangement of his hair shows him to be a bachelor so presumably he is beseeching cupid's aid in some amour a very similar figure is used in later symbolic writings supposed to represent zeuxis kneeling before one of his own paintings and stood for egotism and conceit we also have the same form used so z symbolizing the path of true love originally written z end of part one Part two of Cupid's Cyclopedia by Oliver Herford and John Cecil Clay. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part two Amoria. Amoria is the most ancient and honorable country upon the earth's surface, and is, without question, the most intensely populated. It is a green and fertile country, and the principal occupation of its people is horticultural husbandry the form of government is home rule and to become a citizen although born in the country it is required that at least one complete journey be made from end to end of the country's principal highway this at first seems an odd requirement but there is good reasoning behind it first as this great highway known as the path of true love in its devious windings touches practically every portion of the kingdom the trip is likely to open the traveller's eyes and teach him much of the resources and conditions of the country he wishes to call his own second as the road is rough and in places sometimes seemingly impassable the trip will test the determination and stability of the most hearty turn to the map and we find amoria bounded on three sides by misanthropia the state of indifference and the sea of oblivion emptying into which the quarrel river forever pours its flotsam and jetsam on the upper side you will see it is bounded by the edge of the map this is because it is too cold in that direction to sustain human life readers note here in the text occurs a map which is amply described in the text that follows End note let us now follow upon the map the course of this historic road far up in the corner of the map we find mount curiosity its snow-capped peaks lost in the soft gray veil of mist that has prevented the scientist from determining its greatest heights the ascent of the mountain is usually made on the side where it comes nearest to the state of indifference see note y here a well-known path known as the path of least resistance takes one by such a gradual and agreeable route that little or no effort is realized in the climb and it is usually a surprise when just a little below the frost line one comes suddenly upon a little plateau high high in the heavens here the air is salubrious and the temperature even the view is so wonderful in the early dawn that the most phlegmatic will become enthusiastic this little plateau is known as the plateau platonic and is quite flat 
in spite of its beauty and charm few travellers are satisfied to rest here long in leaving the plateau one must have a care for there are two paths quite similar in appearance one leading up the mountain to nowhere and loneliness and the other the commencement of the path of true love the careful traveller need not mistake the path for beside the entrance at about the height of a man's heart and nailed to a great oak is a crudely fashioned hand with finger pointing the way this is called the hand of fate alas too few take the trouble to look for this guide and many take the wrong path while those who by sheer luck take the right one are easily discouraged because of the very uncertain condition of mind they soon find themselves in these usually lose heart before going a long way or in their careless method of progress take some wrong turning and come to a swift and bad end but we will follow the progress of the traveller who believes in signs it is hard to describe those first impressions as one comes swinging down the mountainside and sees winding far out and across the verdant valley of dreams dotted here and there with its picturesque castles the path of true love like a silver thread it seems so bright and pure and off to the right there is such a happy pink glow in the sky that one usually finds himself humming some old love song luckily the traveller who puts a clover in his buttonhole while crossing the valley of dreams for all too soon the cold winds that sweep across the lake indifference and make the trip around it a perilous and discouraging one will be chilling his marrow he will need both courage and luck when rounding the upper end of the lake he comes upon the rough and rocky stretch of road running along the edge of a fearful precipice which overhangs the lake and is known as the height of indifference here one false step and all is lost past this danger the road turns from the lake but the traveller has hardly time to congratulate himself upon the warmer conditions when he is confronted by a most disconcerting range of mountains known as the mountains of opposition if you do not cross the mountains the mountains will double cross you so push on and with tact and determination they will be overcome the mountains passed a smooth bit of road is reached and brighter weather that after the lowering clouds the storms and many obstacles met with in the mountains will likely mislead the traveller into thinking his troubles over light-hearted he will push forward hurriedly taking little heed of the fast increasing cold fortunately just at the edge of the map and just upon the longitude of respect the road takes a sudden sharp turn but it is almost from bad to worse for it plunges the traveller into the forest of misunderstanding a dark and dismal place that will fill the strongest with misgivings the only way is to stick close to the road this is sometimes hard in the darkness as there are many by-paths travellers once off the correct road have been known to wander for years without once seeing the sunlight about halfway through the forest there is a road turning to the right it seems the easier way dipping down as it does into a little valley and across a turbulent little stream beyond which it disappears from sight in the tangle of brilliant foliage covering mount folly unhappy he who takes this turn for there is many a slippery stone in the bed of this stream and the crossing is not a happy one if one would turn back at the first slip but human nature is stubborn and few do besides there seems little choice between the dismal forest behind and the lure of mount folly ahead folly lasts but a day however and the foliage soon loses its attractive colouring the foolish wayfarer then pushing on finds himself again confronted by the turbulent stream but easier to cross this time 
a little way further the path ends at what appears to be a refreshing spring it is the spring of untruth and he who lies to drink of its waters will ever be a slave of the drug again as one is nearing the edges of the black forest is another road leading off to the left and to the spring of mistrust turn not aside nor drink of this spring its waters are bitter and this turning but takes one back into the depths of the dismal forest emerging from the black forest of misunderstanding the road winds across a fertile and easy-going prairie land twice crossing the acid waters of bicker brook see note twenty three and crossing the quarrel river takes its course along the foot of what by many is considered the most beautiful mountain in amoria mount unselfishness the going is easy here and when one comes to a little road branching off and running right up the mountain side he is apt to feel very little inclination to take it nearly every traveller knows by hearsay that this is a short cut one should take but standing at the foot of the mountain with a broad smooth road on one hand and this little used difficult mountain path it is hardly more than a blazed trail on the other it is much to the traveller's credit who attempts it at all quite a few do however begin the ascent but almost without exception have not the strength to continue and turn back to the main highway only to be shortly plunged again and again in the cold and caustic waters of the quarrel river as the road crosses and recrosses it there are no bridges here and many a poor traveller becomes exhausted in the mad battle with the current hopelessly loses all self-control and is carried away to be lost in the sea of oblivion at the river's mouth is lost hope island this is really nothing more than a bar and superstition has it that there on stormy nights when the tide is coming in congregate those poor lost souls and it is claimed on good authority that the discords of their mournful songs can be heard even as far as the edges of the desert of absence after these several crossings of the quarrel river the road again becomes easy and travel should be a pleasure but the traveller is weary from the recent struggle with the river and is almost thankful for the flat stretch of road where it first crosses the desert of absence it were often better if this bit of road were longer for before the traveller entirely regains his former vim he is deep in the unhealthy mists and quicksands of the slough of despond and it is in a very weakened condition that he commences the second crossing of the desert of absence in this condition is it strange that one loiter in the oasis of flirtation the one bright spot in an otherwise dull desert but an oasis and a flirtation have their limits and when one's thirst is satisfied one wants to move on and well this is for the traveller on the path of true love for only a little and the desert is passed and the road leads for many happy miles through the sweetest and most beautiful meadow-land where the warm sunlight the songs of the birds and the sweet odour of new-mown hay repay one for all the hardships of the past and so stimulate the traveller that he strikes out upon the third crossing of the desert of absence with a light step and a song in his heart and though the trip is longer it seems far shorter than either of the previous crossings so happy indeed has he been and with the soft airs of the desert making his heart grow fonder the way seems so easy that the sudden obstruction of two of the lesser spurs of the mountains of opposition fill him with misgiving and the valley between them is well named blue valley see note thirteen in such a condition of mind the traveller plunges down the mountain side and is soon deep in a great gloomy forest not likely to raise his spirits but rather calculated to depress them still more 
imagine then the elation when bursting at length from the depression of the forest of gloom the traveller sees before him that transcendently beautiful mountain mount hope well may he hold his breath and gaze in rapture for before him rises the most beautiful mountain in all the world and will ever be as long as life lasts with its velvety slopes and shaded dells its little silver rills tinkling down the mountain side sounding like fairy laughter through the trees the gently stirring air freighted with the perfume of myriads of fragrant blossoms and over all a tender rose-coloured glow reflected from the soft pinky clouds that forever tenderly rests upon the mountain's top it is indeed the most beautiful of nature's jewels so it seems with hope so long deferred to that tired-eyed struggler upon love's highway often heart-sick and oppressed by the vicissitudes of the way for here he may rest and gazing again out over the dear valley of dreams rejuvenate the yearning the ambition and the determination that have brought him through so much to these he must now add hope and so equipped and refreshed he dashes a second time through the forest of gloom and though confronted by the most stubborn and rocky section known as the parent peak in the entire range of the mountains of opposition his past experience and his added strength carry him over with little effort and coming down the last steep slope his heart gives a bound as his eye follows the smooth roadway stretching invitingly across a nearly level expanse of well-cultivated country thickly dotted with the happy homes of those who had once been travellers like himself if he be not short-sighted he is able to see even as far ahead as to where the road and his lonely journey end in heavenly mount heart's desire as he passes along many a cheerful face smiles out at him from the doorways and many a cheerful word of welcome and greeting encourage him to hasten the smiles of the rosy-cheeked children seem especially sweet to him the journey's end the goal is reached naught remains further for the traveller now except the oath of allegiance which is performed with considerable ceremony in the little church just around the corner to the left note mount hart's desire is of an attractive shape and thickly surrounded by orange blossoms no two travellers agree as to its height but we are of the opinion that it must be about five feet three or four inches within it is a little shrine called trust which is the duty of every worshipper to protect note why it seems more than a mere coincidence that the path of least resistance should run up mount curiosity on the side nearest to the borders of the state of indifference and there is a very ancient tradition that the first person to make the ascent came from that easy-going country we believe this tradition to be another version of the adam and eve story and feel that it conclusively proves us right in our calculations as to the exact location of the garden of eden we claim it was situated in that part of the state of indifference near to and in full view of mount curiosity and that adam was the first man to make the climb we also believe that adam became lost on the mountain side and never returned to eden and that the path of true love gives a pretty good idea of his subsequent wanderings of which so little heretofore has been known at any rate vast numbers from the state of indifference make the ascent of mount curiosity every year and many of our best citizens have come from that state note twenty three at this point after the more or less extended journey through the unhealthy forest of misunderstanding the traveller must have a care especially if he be of a sensitive nature for the shock of the first plunge through bicker brook will often throw one into a distemper or fever 
some going absolutely out of their heads wander far afield herein lies a grave danger because of the nearness of the road at this point to the boundaries of misanthropia which state is little more than a barren waste the peculiar mental attitude of its inhabitants gives strength to the theory advanced in amoria that its population is made up of those poor fever-ridden souls who have wandered from the path of true love and gone quite mad note thirteen the higher one climbs the duller the thud so with the traveller who has been dreaming across sweet meadowland and balmy wastes when suddenly confronted by a renewal of obstacles which his optimism had made him believe passed for ever and it is in a nervous and uncertain state of mind we find him groping his way through the mists that always fill blue valley here is a great danger for with the steep mountains on three sides the traveller if he once stumble from the road is apt to follow the depression of the valley until morbid and benumbed he wander into the state of indifference the same danger in a lesser degree is lurking in the forest of gloom appendix the appendix has been removed end of part two